Welcome to the Clutch Tech Support Clutch Insulation Lab. This is a Ford F-150. In today's video, we're going to replace the hose that goes from the clutch master cylinder to the slave cylinder. We're going to replace it with a braided stainless hose. Now, there's a couple tools required, a few techniques, but it's a pretty easy job, and this drops into place very nicely. So let's take a look at the tools and a couple of procedures here on the bench before we go to the truck and install this new braided hose. Tools required for the job. Fairly long straight screwdriver to disconnect the push rod from the clutch pedal. A 1 8 inch pin punch or straight punch to tap the roll pin out. Small hammer to drive that punch, not the big one this time. And a 5 16 or 8 millimeter wrench for the bleed screw. And of course, brake fluid. The braided line also includes our clutch hydraulic system quick start guide, which has our toll free tech support phone number and our website. At our website, you can enter our part number for the component you're working with, and any additional bulletins or video links will be right there. Tie wraps are included to tie off the line, secure it. This particular connection system uses a seal that looks kind of like an O-ring. So there's the new seal and the roll pin to retain it. When required, this disconnect tool will be included to disconnect from the shark bite style system that you see here, but our hydraulic system with the clip just use a small screwdriver or needle nose to disconnect that one. If you have a black color, either the female coupling on the slave cylinder or the male on the line that you're removing, either one, give us a call. This is not a cataloging issue. This is somebody has been in there before and replaced parts with different years. And this will only connect to the gold coupling. This will only connect to the black. Give us a call. Clutch pedal start switch. When the clutch pedal is pushed down, this switch closes telling the computer that it's okay to start the truck. It's not gonna jump and take off. Now underneath the dashboard, it's kind of dark up there, and this part of this switch has frequently been black plastic. It makes it pretty hard to see. There's actually two locking tabs, one on each side, that hold this cap on. So I'm just gonna pop that one tab off right there. We don't disconnect the switch from the wiring, I'm just going to pull the switch away from the master cylinder a little bit. It'll rotate. Go on the other side. Unhook it. Now the retainer comes off. Now to get the switch off of the push rod, I'm just going to slide the switch away from the master cylinder a little bit. Push right here. And it disconnects from the push rod. To remove the clutch master cylinder push rod from the clutch lever arm, Insert a thin bladed straight screwdriver behind the retaining bushing, twist, and the push rod with retainer will pop off. To remove the old line, first I'm going to drain out all the old brake fluid. And I'm going to use a socket. This is just a quarter inch drive socket so I can drive the pin into it. Got it supported, got the pin punch in there. Drive it out. Take the old line off. And if you're reusing the master cylinder, carefully remove that seal. Two seals don't fit. To install the line, remove the cap from the master cylinder, cap from the line, there's a seal in the bag. Put the seal on the barb fitting. If you're reusing a master cylinder, check in here. Make sure that the uh, seal didn't stay behind. You can't put two seals in one of these. It won't fit. I'm just going to dip that seal in a little bit of brake fluid. Don't use motor oil or grease to lubricate. Slide it in. I want the barb fitting to go into where the groove in the fitting lines up with the hole in the master cylinder. Take the roll pin. And there it is. And people also ask, are these supposed to turn? Yes. That fitting uses that seal, the O-ring seal, and the roll pin just retains it. Turning, movement, 
Yes, that's part of the system. Installation time. Make sure you leave that protective cap on the end of the plug that will keep dirt out of it. And I transferred the reservoir from the old system, cleaned it out real good. There is a rubber expansion boot underneath the cap. Make sure that's there and that the cap is on. All right, now we're going to install it. So with the cap still on the line, it'll keep dirt out. Just drop it down in position. Remember the tab I talked about with the start switch? Keep that at the six o'clock position as you insert the master cylinder into the pedal assembly and then twist it to lock. Push the rubber boot, this little dust boot forward, lock it into the body. And there are these little plastic uh, Christmas trees. Put them back in the reservoir to attach the reservoir to the firewall. One other thing to attach or install before we start the bleeding process is this little hose clamp. This hose clamp goes on to a stud on the body. So I'm just going to attach the clamp, you heard it lock, onto the hose. I'm just going to let it go ahead and slide down a little bit because I want you to see where the stud is. Right there. So I'm just going to reach down and that little plastic clamp will go back onto the stud where it was and that will hold the line in position on the body. Master cylinder, new braided line, and down there on the body you can see the black clamp that's keeping it in position on the body. Let's review the connection system and a few tricks about it. Take the plug off here. There's the O-ring. That's the seal between these two systems. This sleeve in the original design is the disconnect tool. You push it forward and that lifts the locking tabs off the line and the line can come out. It also acts as a bushing, a stabilizer in there. The clip needs this area right here for the clip to lock in. There's a little shoulder right here and if the sleeve happens to be forward when you're trying to push it in and lock it into the clip, the clip doesn't lock. So you need to make sure we keep the sleeve in place on there but away from the area that the clip locks onto. All right, now actual insertion. We've got brake fluid on the O-ring. I'm going to keep the sleeve away from the area where the clip needs to lock. I'm just going to push in. You heard the click. The sleeve is not interfering with the clip and that system is locked in. That's what happens underneath the truck when you insert the line. Let's go ahead and install the line. Got a little bit of brake fluid in that cap. Put some on the O-ring. I remember I'm not going to have the sleeve up here where it'll prevent the clip from locking in. Make sure the sleeve is back. Got a nice click. It's locked in. Make sure that sleeve is not in. If it's in, there's a chance it can interfere with the clip. So that's locked in. Guess it's time to bleed this system. Before bleeding the system, check the routing of the hose. Use the tie wraps as required. Now this is our master cylinder design and we added a bleed screw right here. So the bleeding procedure starts by filling up the reservoir and we're going to go underneath the truck and we're just going to gravity bleed about two reservoirs of fluid through the system. Nobody sits in the seat, nobody pushes the pedal. So let's start the gravity bleeding process for the slave cylinder. Gravity bleeding the slave cylinder. Put a piece of tubing on there to catch the old brake fluid. Wrench on it. Loosen the bleed screw. And now the fluid's coming out and it's going to take air out of the system with it from the top down. So we're going to run about two reservoirs of fluid through it, close the bleed screw, and then finish at the top. If you occasionally see bubbles coming through this system, they may not be from the actual fluid that's coming out. It could be air coming across the threads of the bleed screw. Not a concern. But about two reservoirs worth of fluid drained through this system for gravity bleeding the slave cylinder, and we're done on the bottom side. Now we'll finish with the master cylinder. Now that we've gravity bled about two reservoirs through the slave cylinder, time to uh, bleed the master cylinder. 
We get the wrench on here. Crack the bleed screw. And fluid and bubbles come out. And we're keeping an eye on the reservoir, making sure we never run out of fluid. Run out of fluid, then you get to start over a little bit. That's about a third of a reservoir. The front of the truck is tip up. That helps. Make sure the bleed screw is at the high point here. Close the bleed screw. Put the boot in. Put the cap on. If your master cylinder does not have a bleed screw right here, here's a link to a video. In the second half of this video, we show the clutch hydraulic system installation and the procedures for working with this master cylinder without a bleed screw. Now to install the start switch, if you're installing a new master cylinder at the same time, by the way, ours has a bleed screw, makes this project very simple. The push rod has a tag that says, don't install the push rod just yet until you've installed the whole system in the truck. What that's trying to help you with is if you install this right now, it locks in. That's a permanent installation. It just makes the package bigger, a little more awkward to install in the truck. So let's keep it simple. So we're not going to install the push rod just yet. Now we can take the start switch, hook the retainer where it needs to be, snap it in. Now this is going to be the master cylinder side over here. We're up underneath the dash. Just take the push rod, slide it through the switch, and now you can lock it on. That's a pretty easy way to do that. Start switch installation with the push rod still attached. Now we're going to angle the start switch, hook it onto the push rod, snap it in position. Take the retainer, slide it underneath, snap it on, rotate it, and the start switch will slide on the push rod. Just a little bit more difficult than if the push rod was off, but very easy to do once you know the trick. If you have any questions about a clutch hydraulic system, clutch, or a flywheel, please go to our website, clutchtechsupport.com, enter our part number, You'll have additional links to bulletins, some videos, and our toll-free tech support hotline.